Thank you for the introduction and hello ladies and gentlemen from Vienna. My name is Andreas Stolwitzer. I'm currently sitting at the Institute for Structural Engineering at TU Wien in Austria. In the next minutes I will tell you something about, and that's also the title of the conference paper, the influence of the ballasted track on the dynamic behavior of steel railway bridges. Now, what is awaiting you in this presentation? Well, at first I will give you a short introduction to the topic, the dynamics of railway bridges. Then I will talk about the motivation, so why are we doing what we are doing? And that's the discrepancy between measurement and calculations. I will come to that in two slides. Afterwards, I will talk about the starting point of my research work, because concerning the dynamic of railway bridges, the influence of the ballasted track is the big unknown and to investigate its dynamic behavior in an experimental way we developed a very special large-scale test facility. Then after a brief presentation of the test facility I will show you the major findings concerning the dynamic behavior of the ballasted track. In the end I will conclude this presentation with a short outline. Let's get straight to the topic dynamics of railway bridges. Here in this photo you can see a train that crosses a bridge. This train is a dynamic excitation and causes vibrations of the bridge. Especially during high speed traffic there may occur excessive vibrations in this example expressed via the vertical accelerations. Occurring excessive accelerations can lead to serious negative consequences uh, such as fatigue symptoms of the structure, distortion of the track, destabilization of the ballast bed and in the worst case even derailment. This problem of excessive bridge vibrations applies especially to steel railway bridges due to the slim and light design. Well, for a dynamic calculation of train-induced bridge vibrations, there is a wide range of mechanical models for both the bridge and the crossing train, with different levels of detail. The mainly used bridge model is the Euler Bernoulli beam, which you can see below. This is a very simple model where the structure and the ballasted drag are combined in one single beam. Now, on this slide, I come to the main motivation of our research work, and that's the discrepancy between reality here on the left and calculation here on the right. If the actual dynamic behavior of a bridge is measured and then compared to the calculated behavior, there are often significant discrepancies. The calculation often overestimates the actual vibration responses and therefore lead to uneconomical results. This uh, overestimation applies to the deflections, the accelerations and also to the dynamic parameters which are frequency and the damping factor. One main reason for these discrepancies lies in the ballasted track, more specifically in the consideration of its damping and stiffness properties in dynamic calculation. Because the problem concerning this matter is that there is no available accurate mechanical model with related dynamic characteristic values of the ballasted track. So the interesting research question now is, how can we quantify the dynamic characteristics of the ballasted track? And here you can see the answer to this question, a very special large-scale test facility to investigate the, dynam the dynamic behavior of the ballasted track by experiments. The central element of the facility is an 8 meter long and 4.5 meter wide steel trough here in green. In this trough there is an integrated 6 meter long section of ballasted track, which you can see on the bottom right photo. So the cross section of the test facility correlates with the cross section of a typical single track steel railway bridge. The trough is supported in two axes. The first bearing is a fixed bearing on a concrete base, which you can see here. The second bearing consists of spring bearing under the main girders, here in yellow. The location and the stiffness of the spring bearings can be altered. This allows for a variation of the facilities resonance frequency. The achievable frequency range lies between 4 and 9 Hz. At the free end there is an unbalanced exciter that generates a dynamic load in the form of a vertical harmonic force. On the bottom right photo you can also see a steel construction between the rails. 
This construction connects the track with a concrete wall behind, so in case of vertical displacements of the trough caused by the unbalance, unbalance exciter, the track is held in its horizontal position. Lastly, on the top right photo, you can see a blue construction on the track. This construction is a preloading device which can be forced down on the track in four points. This allows, despite the investigation of the unloaded track, also the investigation of the situation of a loaded track. Here you can see a longitudinal section of the facility. Now concerning the tests carried out, there are two different test modes. The first one is the vertical test mode, where the unbalanced exciter induces vertical vibrations of the trough. In this case, the operation runs at resonance, whereas the adjusted resonance frequency of the facility is equal to the excitation frequency of the exciter. Apart from that, the track itself can be moved back and forth horizontally by a hydraulic unit, which you can see here on the left. In this case, the spring bearing is replaced by a second fixed bearing. This second mode is the horizontal test mode. I will come to that later. Now let's get straight to the results from the experiments. At first I will discuss the vertical test mode. The operating principle follows a three-point approach. At first the location and stiffness of the spring bearing is adjusted to set the resonance frequency. Then the used Allen balance mass in the exciter is set. The higher the used unbalance mass, the higher are the vertical displacements and accelerations. Then the oscillation test runs at resonance. At this point I come directly to the results and here the damping factor is of particular interest. In this chart now you can see the damping factor depending on the resonance frequency. And here some very interesting correlations appear. At first the damping factor follows a clear frequency frequency dependency and increases in a quadratic way with higher frequencies. The second phenomenon is a subdominant displacement or rather acceleration dependency. The colored marks represent experiments with identical adjusted spring bearing and different used unbalanced masses. With higher displacements resulting from higher unbalanced masses used, the damping factor slightly increases. And then there is another relation concerning the colored marks. There is an inclination to the left. With higher displacements, in case of identical adjusted uh, spring bearing, the resonance frequency slightly decreases. Now, the interesting question is, which damping mechanisms occur in the ballasted track. And coming directly to the answer at this point, the dynamic analysis revealed that there are in fact three damping or energy dissipation mechanisms which occur in the ballasted track. These three energy dissipation mechanisms are related to different movements or kinematics of the ballasted track. Well, the first mechanism is related to horizontal relative displacements between the track and the ballast bed. Additionally, you can see on the right side a possible mechanical model adjusted to the mechanism. This model uses horizontally orientated spring damper elements. Then the second mechanism is related to vertical relative displacements between the track and the structure. On the right you can see a possible related mechanical model using spring damper elements as well. Now the third and last mechanism is related to the absolute movements of the ballast bed. This mechanism includes the material damping and also friction effects without measurable relative displacements. As mentioned before, despite the vertical test mode, there is also a second a horizontal test mode. Below you can see again a longitudinal section of the test facility. Now in this case the track is moved in a horizontal direction by a hydraulic presses. This test mode equals isolated research of the horizontal mechanism. Now both the excitation force and the horizontal displacement are measured. By measuring these two components, components, hysteresis loops can be generated out of the measured 
data. In this figure here, you can see several hysteresis loops for constant excitation frequency and, dis and different displacement amplitudes. What's now important is that the hysteresis loops provide important information on the damping and the stiffness properties. So the slope provides information on the stiffness, the shape and the area within the loop provide information on the damping properties. Now out of this information, the stiffness and damping values related to this mechanical model can be determined. Finally, on this slide, I will show you one very interesting phenomenon we detected. So below you can see a three-dimensional illustration of measured hysteresis loops. In this experiment, the displacement amplitude is adjusted at a constant value of one millimeter and the excitation force is increased step by step from one to 13 hertz. You can see with increasing frequency, the shape and slope change. At 13 Hz, the, the loop shows a zero degree slope and the shape corresponds to an ellipsis. And at this point, the ballast undergoes a change to a sort of a liquid state. And now, in this video of the related experiment, you can see how this liquid state looks in reality. So at this point, I come to the end of the presentation and the brief outlook. So what is still to be done in the near future? Well, a determination of characteristic values related to a more detailed model, which includes all three energy dissipation mechanisms, is on the top of our to-do list. Then a further research is planned where the three mechanisms are investigated, isolated and in a higher frequency range. And of course, the implementation of the developed model into bridge models used in dynamic calculations is planned. So at last, during the one year postponement happened a lot. And if you are more interested in our research work, I refer you to these references at this point. So in the end, I can say thank you and good vibrations to everyone. Um, well, actually, I had planned to show you some spectacular video of a railway bridge that vibrates. But uh, luckily for everyone, I didn't found any. So we are still safe. Thank you.